Dwayne Lesnar here to talk about replicating to S3 with the use of a pilot-like cluster in NC2 on AWS. We're going to take a look at the use case and then show the deployment of our multi-cloud snapshot technology and also failing over and failing back from S3. Let's jump into the video. Our primary cluster is replicating tier one workloads directly to the NC2 pilot light cluster for fast recovery time objectives. That pilot light cluster could also be using remote EBS attached storage to provide more capacity for those use cases. And now in 6.8.1, we have the ability to also send Nutanix snapshots directly to S3. Uh, so now you have a way of optimizing the cost for your DR workloads. When you need to fail over, you can fail over the tier one workloads right away. And then you can auto expand your cluster. Once you have your additional nodes, then you can restore the workloads running on S3. For the multi-cloud snapshot technology, when you go to deploy the service, first you will enable the microservices platform where the multi-cloud snapshot technology will run. It'll consist of three VMs that form a Kubernetes cluster, and then the multi-cloud snapshot technology will be deployed on top of it. So you'll have a way of restoring your workloads to the NC2 cluster. If your primary cluster is still up and running, you can also restore to your primary cluster as well. Let's dive in and take a look at this great new technology. In our AWS console, we've deployed a S3 interface endpoint, which we're using the user management security group to protect it. Now you could add your own security group in, but this is one security group that comes along with the NC2 deployment for HV and our storage controllers. So by using that same security group ID, you could go in there and edit it. Now here's our brand new S3 bucket for uh, storing to S3, we've called it Pilot Light. We can see there's already some data in here, so we do have it up and running already. Uh, I've enabled versioning on the bucket, but not necessary. Now we do have our Prism Central deployed. Now we just wanted to double check that we have free IPs when we deploy the multi-cloud snapshot technology. By default, we will Nutanix will use the whole range of the subnet when it gets deployed with flow networking. So we've already adjusted it to have the top end have free IPs before we proceed with the deployment. Now here is our uh, command line which will deploy the multi-cloud snapshot technology for us. It does take some time for the deployment. Uh, as it's deploying three VMs for the Kubernetes cluster and then laying on the containers that will provide the service. A few moments later. Now that MST has been deployed, we can connect our Prism Central in AWS to our Prism Central on-prem by connecting availability zones. This will allow us to exchange protection policies and recovery plans between the two sites. You just need the VIP of your on-prem Prism Central and the password, and then it'll start exchanging that information. Now we can take a look at the two virtual machines that we are replicating to S3. We're using a category DR colon S3 is our key value pair. Now, we'll look at the protection policy, which we've already configured. And so this protection policy back up to S3, our primary cluster, which is in Phoenix. Uh, we already have a schedule assigned to it. And then we see here we have the Prism Central name, and then it'll have Nutanix uh, clusters pilot light as the option. And in gray, you can see that it has bucket beside it. So you know that it's going 
to the S3 storage. So with that in place, our workloads are replicating now to S3. We see the two VMs that are assigned via the category. So we're in a good position now to go and create the recovery plan. So we'll update the recovery plan. It has a name. We have local AZ is always the AZ that we're logged into. Going to our Prism Central in AWS, we have our two virtual machines that are protected. Uh, we could add additional stages in uh, if we had more workloads and we wanted them to come up in a specific order. And then on the network side, we see here that while we don't have an L2 configured, we're having the same 10.19.101.1 networks on both sides. So we'll be able to preserve the IPs after uh, the failover. We could easily also set up the L2 as well. So we'll save this configuration. Now that we have our protection policies and recovery plans, we can pop over into the Prism Central in AWS. We always fail over from the destination side. So we'll go hit failover. Now here we do have to specify the target cluster as we want to ensure that it's going to our NC2 cluster that's up and running as the data is currently sitting on S3 and not really tied to a cluster. Um, so we'll hit failover and we can see that in the recovery status, we hit failover just one more time, type that in to ensure that we really want to move these workloads over. We'll have a warning appear just reminding us to expand our cluster if we're restoring from S3 if we need the additional space. We can now pop into the recovery plan and look at the failover tasks as they're happening. So here we have the same warning that was just mentioned about the adding of additional nodes. The syncing of the recovery point happens, uh, the last bit of data from the running VMs getting replicated, and then migrating is data coming from S3 onto the NC2 cluster. And then we will be all wrapped up and our VMs running in AWS. So now if we pop into the VM tab, we see our VMs running in Prism Central uh, with the same IPs. Now, if we want to do the recovery back on our on-prem Prism Central, we just have to do the reverse steps, go to recovery plan and perform the failover. So you'll have an easy way of protecting your workloads and going back and forth from S3 onto your primary cluster. So we run the failover again. We don't have to add a target as it's going directly to the cluster listed type failover. We will get a warning about no protection policy for the VMs as they're new to the NC2 cluster. Uh, you wouldn't see this error if you were going from the S3 directly to the on-prem cluster. So we'll hit execute anyway and bring those virtual machines back. We'll go look at the same tasks we did before on the failover. Go into tasks and failover. So the warning that we just talked about, about the protection policy, and then our VMs will start replicating back. And like that, we're back on on-prem and ready for business. Nutanix customers now have an easy way for tier two workloads to live in S3 using the same Nutanix DR functionality. So they don't have to relearn any tools and still have the same process for protecting tier one and tier two workloads. Please leave a comment and a like on the video if you found it useful. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.